Dear friends in Christ. Yeah, Elaine did a good job in finding that one, didn't he? Because <laughs> isn't that what life feels like sometimes? Right? It's, it's, I, th- it, I think everybody who's seen this, I think everybody's relating to the little guy in the red <laughs> as opposed to the other guy, right? And that's what, what life can be like sometimes. Coming face to face with the things of life feels like this. And for some people, coming face to face with God can feel like this as well. This very thing. Because what we're talking about today is coming face to face with God. The passage that was just read, the God's word for us, is the story of Jesus being transfigured on the, transfigured on the Mount of Transfiguration. And the disciples, Peter, James, and John, come face to face with who Jesus really is. And it's the same way with us, as we come face to face with God. And are we ready to come face to face with God? Because back in the Old Testament, Israel came face to face with God. One of the stories that the Old Testament tells us in there is that the story of the Ten Commandments, and a lot of people know about the giving of the Ten Commandments, but they don't really know what happens right before that time. God leads his people, his children out of Egypt and leads them to the edge of Mount Sinai. And as they get to the edge of Mount Sinai, they camp around. And Moses comes up to the people and tells them, okay, you need to be ready because in three days, three days you're going to meet God. They do all the preparations, they get ready to meet God. Three days later, God tells them, okay, come up to the edge of the mountain. Don't come on the mountain, just come up to the edge of the mountain. So they walk to the edge of the mountain. And as they get to the edge of the mountain... Suddenly a great cloud descends to the top of Mount Sinai and there's lightning and there's thunder and there's earth shaking and there's loud noise. And what happens here is God has descended from heaven to light on the top of Mount Sinai. And when it sees that, what it says in Exodus, it says, everyone in the camp shuddered with fear. Everyone in the camp shuddered with fear. When people come face to face with God in the Old Testament, it's displaced with fear. When people come face to face with God, sometimes it's laced with fear. There's the story of the New Testament. The story of Jairus, Jairus and Jairus' daughter, Jesus in Capernaum, and a man by the name of Jairus who's a leader of the synagogue. He comes to Jesus and says, please help my daughter, she's dying. Well, by the time Jesus gets there, he's already dead. She's already dead. And Jesus reaches up and Jesus heals her and she's risen. For, she, he raises her from the dead and she eats. And it says all the people there were terrified at what they saw. The disciples are in the boat with Jesus crossing the Sea of Galilee one day. One of my favorite stories, you hear you have these disciples, these guys who made their living on the Sea of Galilee, who had seen it all. And here they're in the midst of this terrible storm, and you can almost hear them screaming, We're dying, we're dying, Jesus, don't you care? And Jesus is kind of in the back of the boat, he's in the back of the boat, sound asleep. And you can almost see it in your mind, can't you? Is Jesus in the back of the boat, and he kind of groggily wakes up and wipes the sleep from his eyes, and just kind of very quietly says, Quiet, please. And the sea gets perfectly calm. And it says they were terrified. And in this story, Jesus leads Peter, James, and John up to the top of the mountain. It's seemingly an ordinary thing. He leads them up to the top of the mountain. And they see him. They see him as we like to say. They see him as we will see him in heaven. They see him as the women saw him after Easter. He's risen from the dead. They see him in all that spectacular glory. And it says they fell face down to the ground terrified. But that's not the only things people in the Bible got afraid of. You get in the Bible and you're getting afraid... There's a guy by the name of Joshua. 
was Moses' assistant for 40 years and he came to the edge of the promised land. It was time for Moses to die and God looks to Joshua and says, okay, Joshua, you're the one. You're the one I've got this job for. And it says Joshua was afraid. <laughs> he came face to face with his future and he was afraid. Or you have a guy by the name of Solomon. His father David dies and Solomon's sitting there. He's supposed to be the next king. This huge responsibility that's been placed on his shoulders. This huge responsibility that he has to deal with. And it sits there and he says he was scared. As they came face to face with the things they had to, in their world and face to face with the life they had to lead, it says they got scared and they were afraid. So my question for you this morning is, so what do you have to face? What do you have to face in your world and in your life today? Is it family troubles? Is it troubles in your family, troubles going on with kids, with parents, siblings, brothers and sisters? Is it something going on, troubles in the family? Yeah, what are you having to face today? Is it hurts, hang-ups, habits, addictions? Is it something that's driving you crazy? Some, something that's pulling you away from God? What are you having to face? Is it work? Are you having to face the fact that there's too much of it? Are you having to face the fact maybe there's not enough of it? Or maybe not any of it? Going around in the world. It doesn't take a genius to sit here and figure out we're all facing the economy. I saw a message from a friend of mine who lives in California. She was lamenting the fact she paid $4 a gallon for gasoline this week. It doesn't take a genius to go to the grocery store and figure out where grocery prices are going. Are you having to come face to face with your future? Face to face with what's going to happen in your future and where your life is going and what's happening in your life. A couple of weeks ago, I was, uh, when I was gone, I was teaching a course called Peer Ministry Training. It's a course for uh, high school students from around the state of Missouri. And it's, this is the leaders of the, youth, leaders of the church, their, their youth groups. These are the leaders, youth leaders of the ch their churches. We're gathered around, and one of the things that we do is they place their worries, what they're afraid of in life. I put it on a slip of paper anonymously and put it on a bucket. And we do some teaching around it, and then we pray anonymously for what those things that is in life. And in this group, there was a group of 17 of us. And there were some adults mixed in there as well. And I could tell when we came to an adult and when we came to a youth slip. Because the adult slips always had something about health or something about parents or something about job. Because all the rest of them had my future. Please guide my future in life. Are you struggling with the future in your life? Whether you're 10, whether you're 20, whether you're 30, 50, 80? Are you having to come face to face with what life and the future of life is going to hold for you? What are you face to face with today that you're struggling with? Because Jesus sits there and says, as we come face to face with things, we come face to face with life, and the disciples came face to face with there. Right? Remember, Jesus is sitting there in, in that reading. Jesus is up there on the mountain, and he's in his hall of heavenly splendor, and Moses and Elijah are there, and the clouds there, and the voice is booming from heaven in here and they fall down on the ground and they're terrified and Jesus says don't be afraid it's the one thing that's different see at the Old Testament when the Israelites gathered at the ed edge of Mount Sinai it sits there and said they were terrified and shaking it says God never said don't be afraid but Jesus comes and tells the disciples don't be afraid don't be afraid of what we have to face in life he says that was the theme last week, you remember. 
He said, don't be afraid of life. Matthew 6, Jesus says, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Simply this, it's this message, is that God says, I'm going to take care of the littlest of the creatures on earth. Now you are the crown of my creation. You're the ones I died for. You're the ones I rose from the dead. You're the ones I pour out my love. I'm going to take care of you as well. He says, don't be afraid of the future. Don't be afraid of the things you have to face in life. I'm going to take care of all this small stuff. He says, don't be afraid of the things we have to face in life. And God says, don't be afraid when you come face to face with God. Don't be afraid when you come face to face with God. The story is told of Martin Luther when he was studying to become a priest. He'd gone through all the classes and he'd been ordained to be a priest and he was doing his first mass, his first communion. And he goes through the service and the story is told that he does great through the whole of the service and he gets to the very part in the Mass where he's ready to consecrate the elements. And he gets there and he chokes. And runs out. And they ask him, what happened? And he said, I came face to face with a God who was angry at me and couldn't do it. The thing that we need to understand is we don't coming face to face with that God. We're coming face to face with the God who has nail prints in his hands. We're coming face to face with the God who has a spear mark in his side that's bleeding out of his side. We're coming face to face with the God who loves us so much. He's died on a cross for us. We're coming face to face with the God who loves you so much. He fills you with his love and fills you with his life and fills you with his grace and fills you with his purpose. We come face to face with a God who loves us and wants the best for us and wants to care for us. That's the God we come face to face with. That's the God we come face to face with. It's a God who cares for us and loves us. It's not a God who hates us. Probably be willing to bet no matter what room I'm in. If you get more than about three people in a room, somebody in that room is struggling with God is struggling and dealing with God and fighting with God and struggling around with God. So it's probably safe to say that somebody in here, maybe more somebody's in here, is struggling and fighting with God these days. And that's okay. Because we all get that point in our lives of coming face to face and having to struggle with God. But you need to remember this. You are not struggling with the God who's angry at you. You're struggling with the God who loves you. And loves you more than you can comprehend. That's who you're struggling with. It's a God who loves you more than you can comprehend. He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of the future that he has for you. Jesus says. For the disciples sitting there on the top of the mountain, the disciples had a future. They didn't necessarily know it at the time. But Jesus knows the future that they have and the future that they're going to come face to face with. They're going to see Jesus die on a cross. That's the future that the disciples are going to see. Jesus knows that. And he says, don't be afraid of the future. He tells us, don't be afraid of the future. Because Jeremiah 29, 11, God says, For I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. God knows what the future of your life is going to be like. God knows where he's going to lead you. God knows what the future he, the future he has in store for you. He says, don't worry about it. I'm going to be there with you. I'm going to be there beside you as you go through that. And yes, maybe at times I'm going to carry you through some of that future, but that's okay. Don't be afraid of the future 
that he has for you. And he says, don't be afraid of Jesus' touch. And see, this is one of the things that's unique to this story. The story in the Bible that comes down and you see people in the Old Testament and people in the Bible coming face to face with God and face to face with what God's done in their life and struggling in different ways. It says Jesus touched them. Now there is a story in the Genesis where Jacob is uh, Jacob wrestles with God. But that's a little different story. Here you have the people of God seeing God in all His heavenly splendor. Jesus in all His glory. And they're down on the ground. And they're terrified down on the ground. And I hope you can see a picture of it. Because Jesus walks over to them and reaches down. This is the unique part. He reaches down and He touches them. And you can almost gently see him touch their shoulders and says, Get up. Don't be afraid. He reaches down and he touches them. And that Monday, Thursday evening, Jesus is in the upper room and the disciples are terrified of what's going to happen. They know something's going to happen. Jesus knows what they're going to face in just a few hours. They know that in a few short minutes, Judas is leaving to betray him. He knows in a couple of hours he's going to be arrested. He knows within a few hours what's going to happen to him. He knows what they're going to see. And he reaches out and he touches them and says, This is my body. He says, take and eat. This is my body. And he reaches out with them. This one's got some in it. <laughs> he reaches out to them and says, take and drink. This is my blood of the new covenant. Jesus reaches out with his body and his blood and he touches them. And fills them with his forgiveness and fills them with His grace. Be willing to bet and willing to say that all of us are having to face stuff in our lives and face things in this world that we have. And guess what? God just touched you a minute ago. This is where God comes and touches you and says, do not be afraid. He comes and He touches you and says, I've got the plans. I know what's going to happen. He comes and touches you and says, this is how much I love you. He comes and touches you and says, I'm going to help you face life. He comes and He touches us right here. So Peter, James, and John, along with Jesus, head down the mountain. And often we have to come down off the mountain. I call the mountain, that coming down out of the mountain, I can be honest with you, for me, when coming down the mountain comes, coming down the mountain is about 7 o'clock on Sunday nights. Because this is a high, and 7 o'clock on Sunday nights, the reality of tomorrow's Monday morning <laughs> sets in. It's coming down off the mountain, and we have to face life all over again. We have to come down off the mountain at some time and face life all over again. When the disciples were coming down off that mountain, facing all that the world was throwing at them, they had the power and they had the transfiguration behind them and they had Easter in front of them. When we have to come down off the mountain and we have to face the difficulties and we have to face life and we have to face the challenges and we have to face the things that are facing us in our world that we come face to face with, we need to remember this. We've got the power of Easter behind us. And we've got the power of Easter in front of us. We're Easter people. Jesus is still risen from the dead. That's the power that he has. And that's why he says, don't be afraid. Amen.